everybody. Guess where we are today? We're at Mill Creek Urban Farm in Bridgeton, New Jersey. Do you even know that it's here, Bridgetonians? Well, you should know. And this gentleman is responsible for almost everything here. His name is Marcus Weaver. Marcus, thank well, you so much for having us here today. We're, We're really excited. We're honored to have you here <laughs> and always happy to tell our story. Yay! So what started Mill Creek Urban Farm and how long have you been involved with it? I've been involved with Mill Creek Urban Farm for just over eight years. The farm was started prior to that in 2009, uh, initially as a community garden where people could come, learn to grow vegetable crops, uh, have a little dedicated plot where they could come do their own oh, growing okay. here. Mm -hmm. So did you have the greenhouses back then or did it evolve to this? Um, it evolved. Initially, um, I think there was maybe just the one greenhouse which was used for starting plants. The hydroponic system, as you see here, was added in 2012. And what is a hydroponic system? Hydroponic just refers to a way of growing where the plant's nutritional needs are met through water mm -hmm. as a medium rather than soil. So we use water, we add the fertilizers that the plant needs, and those just get circulated typically through a growing channel of some sort over the roots of the plants, as you see here, uh, and the plant gets its nutrition directly out of the solution that way. Beautiful. This looks like, is this lettuce? That is lettuce, you are correct. A red butterhead lettuce in this case. Nice. And this looks like curly green. It is. And this looks like watercress. <laughs> that is watercress. I wonder why I am I think impressed that uh, <laughs> somebody actually knows what it is. That's one of the crops people often look at and say, what's going on here? And what rhymes with impressed? Watercress. Yes, that's right. <laughs> okay, so um, you must have some help because this is a large operation. There's not only this greenhouse, but there's one right next door and there are two across the street. And I see people you know doing other things what how how do you get your help and what do they do this is a gateway project so some of the folks you see here working are gateway employees we have a couple full-time positions a couple part-time positions and a smattering of volunteer help as well wow i'd like to smatter <laughs> <laughs> because it smatters you know what i'm saying so tell me about um uh, you're working with some developmentally disabled folks too that work here. That's wonderful. How did you get involved with that? Uh, to me, that is an important part of what happens on this farm. The hydroponic greenhouse here, as I mentioned, was added in 2012. That was particularly with the focus of providing uh, a learning opportunity and a work opportunity for developmentally disabled individuals. Wonderful. That continues to be a core part of the mission of our farm. How do you find them or do they find you? Uh, some of both, actually. Mostly we are working with organizations that provide care for this type of person. So Elwin, Bancroft, uh, Poffacom in the past, Devereaux, Salem County Special Services School District, those are all groups uh, providing some kind of service for these folks. And typically it's some of their staff, some of their mm -hmm. clients that come out here for a work day. And what about kids? Do you have groups of kids come and check out your, especially the school kids in, in Bridgeton? We do as well. Education is also an important part of what happens at the farm here. Uh, obviously COVID-19 has kind of upset a lot of the, the norms uh, with those kind of projects and activities. But uh, yes, we do school tours, have groups of young people coming out to volunteer to learn about what we do and uh, hopefully take some of that home and put it to practice there. Oh, that's wonderful. What, what is an important thing that you would like the kids to know about why, why this is important to the community? Everybody needs to eat. Everybody should try to eat uh, a healthy diet that includes at least some fruits and vegetables. Uh, and I just think there's so many lessons that can be learned from growing your own food, uh, something very fulfilling about following that from seed, planting to harvest and finally to the dinner plate. Oh, that's wonderful. Farm to table, as it were. <laughs> now, I noticed that you also have gardens where you're growing in soil, and we were reading some stories uh, where we were in a, a greenhouse that had 
plants that were growing in what looked like packs of soil, and they were growing up strings. What's that all about? Well, one of the points I would like to make about growing is that it really can be done almost anywhere. You don't need the traditional vegetable garden plot in your backyard. Right. Uh, this farm is actually on the site of a former housing project. Oh. Uh, used to be apartment buildings up and down this street. Partly because of that, most of the growing we do here is above ground in a hydroponic system, in the grow bags like you mentioned in our other greenhouse, or in raised beds or containers outdoors. So growing can be done a lot of different ways uh, and pretty much anywhere if you have a little spot and enough light to make it happen. It's really wonderful. Do you guys have any concerns about uh, bugs or critters or, you know, like a normal backyard garden would be subject to like groundhogs or <laughs> we've seen a lot of wildlife on this farm uh, if you're a gardener I think you will quickly learn that there's always challenges that you need to deal with right. uh, including diseases and insect pests often uh, we try to use a lot of uh, organic or biological controls here sometimes that means just altering the environment mm -hmm. maybe lowering the humidity in a greenhouse for instance sometimes uh, that may mean using a good bug to eat a bad bug. Right. Uh, we do some of that. Thrips are a little greenhouse pest that can be very hard to control. Mm. But there's also another little insect critter, it's not truly an insect, that feeds on the thrip eggs. Oh, that's so wonderful. So we put these helpful nematodes in our mm. greenhouse to eat the thrips and control the thrips that way. Oh, that's great. Is there anything else that you want our kids to know about Mill Creek Urban Farm? One, that we're here. Two, that part of our mission is education and we love teaching people and helping people to understand the value of growing their crops. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. And three, that uh, it's important to eat a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables and yes. we'd love to help you do that on your own. Woo and when can people stop by and check it out? Probably the best way to do that is to either through the Gateway website mm -hmm. or by contacting me through email, just send an email. Okay. Uh, have teachers do that a lot. Hey, we're thinking about a field trip and we come, what's a time that works for you? And I noticed that you have a produce stand or a farm market stand outside your gates. What's that all about? Part of our mission is being a local source of fresh fruits and veggies for the community. Um, so this spring, we put that little structure out there with the idea of taking the things that we're growing here and making it available to the public. Right. Um, we're set up there Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 3 p.m. Come by, help yourself, a little cash box, oh, and nice. the honor system, drop it in there. And you know how I found out about you guys? I don't mean to interrupt you, but I saw a sign at the corner where by the dollar store. I saw one of your signs and I was like, where is that place? <laughs> and I drove by on a weekend because I work on Saturdays. And I was like, this is amazing. I can't believe it. I've got to get in there. And I didn't realize that this was the same Marcus that came by the library to get books for his kids. And then one and two added up, and I've got seven. And here we are. Uh, and what did you want to say before I so rudely interrupted you about selling? The produce produce? stand, because of the heat, we put that on hold for right. a few weeks. Beginning next week, we should be back to that again. Oh, wonderful. Watch for the lawn signs, okay. the yard signs <laughs> that brought you in. When we're open again with our produce there, we'll put that back out, but probably next week. Okay, and just one more question. What else do you do with your produce? Where else do you distribute it? And who purchases it from? Purchase it, it, you know what I'm trying to say. Where does the produce end up? I get that <laughs> question a lot. Uh, there's kind of three parts to that. One is Gateway also operates a food pantry. so. Part of everything we grow here gets donated and goes to people that are facing food insecurity. Got it. Uh, we do sell a lot of what we grow here to generate an income for the project. Okay. Uh, that goes to some local restaurants or to other wholesalers, distributors. And then a third portion is that we're trying to build this little produce stand where whoever's around can come by and help themselves to whatever they need. That's wonderful. It's called Mouse and Mole and the Year Round Garden by Doug Cushman. Being that we're in a sort of a year-round garden, I thought it was appropriate. Look how cool that picture is. Mouse and mole. They're planting some tomatoes and some radishes. One day in early spring, Mole was in his tool shed 
when Mouse stopped by for a visit. What are you looking at? Mouse asked. I'm looking at my seeds and baby plants, said Mole. They just arrived. I'm going to begin planting my vegetable garden today. Do you want to help? See what we got going on over here? We have a wheelbarrow, a watering can, a robin, a butterfly, and here he is in his shed. We've got garden tools like a trowel, pruning shears, a hoe, watering can, and a rake. So Mole is asking Mouse, do you want to help? Mole showed Mouse how to plant pea seeds. Then Mole planted the baby broccoli plants. When will the peas come up? asked Mouse. Not for a while, Mole said. We have to wait for the sun and the rain to make them grow. Oh, said Mouse, I hate waiting. What can we do while we wait? You see them planting peas and broccoli? And see how a seed grows? It's a little pea, then it puts, puts out a little top. Here's the roots, and pretty soon you see the leaves coming up out of the soil. And how seeds are planted are either by gardeners, by animals, by air, or by water. Did you know that a coconut is a seed? That's amazing. When it rains, we can splash in the puddles and we can watch the water rushing under the bridge. What is rain? Water evaporates from oceans, lakes, and rivers. It makes a cloud. When the cloud gets too heavy, it rains. And a plant definitely needs water, don't you think? Like we do, we need water, right? The roots take in water and the tubes in the stems carry the water to the leaves. After the rain, we might see a rainbow, said Mouse, and they did. <sighs> a few weeks later, Mole said, see how the rain and the sun have made the garden grow? First you have flowers, then the bees visit the flowers to get the nectar and to make honey, and they also carry the pollen on their legs and they transfer it to another flower, and that's how you pollinate plants. Thank you, bees. We love our bees. Butterflies are pollinators also, and other bugs too. Birds also. Spring turned into summer. The days were warm, like today, and sunny. The plants in Mole's garden grew tall. He planted new ones. The corn and peppers are still small, what should we do while we wait for them to grow? Asked Mouse. And down here they're talking about photosynthesis. You know what that is? That's when the sun gives some energy to a leaf and the carbon dioxide gas from the air and makes food for the plant. And then the leaf gives off oxygen gas. It's a system. And what do we eat? We eat peas and seeds and sunflower seeds spinach and cabbage, we eat roots like carrots and potatoes, and we eat flowers like broccoli and cauliflower. Did you know that broccoli and cauliflower were flowers? Cauliflower, ah, there's a clue. Well, you know, they were like, what should we do while we wait? And Mole said, we can go to the beach. Yeah, the beach. We can swim and play in the sand. Oh, that's my kind of day. Then we can go camping in the woods and sit around a campfire watching fireflies. They're talking, excuse me, they're talking about seaweed because they went to the beach. Do you know that seaweeds are plants that have no flowers, no fruits or roots? They just grow in the ocean. And some seaweed can be eaten and it definitely needs sunlight. It feeds a lot of critters in the sea. Have you ever eaten seaweed? I have. It's yummy. So when they're going camping in the woods, they see fireflies. And what is a firefly light? There's two chemicals in the firefly, plus oxygen from the air, and it makes a living light without heat. Remember our firefly book we read a couple weeks ago? Yeah. 
Soon there was much to do in the garden. The corn and the peppers are ready to eat, said Mole, and so are the tomatoes. You see how big their plants got? But there are so many of them, said Mouse. Oh, don't worry, said Mole. We can, we will can the tomatoes and make corn relish for the winter. Hey, do you know what's under the garden? We've got ants and earthworms and baby beetles and an aphid. And over here they're talking about what makes soil. The wind, the rain, and the ice break up rocks. The heat and the cold crack the rocks. The dead plants and animals decay. You add bacteria and you've got new soil! What? Soil. <laughs> Not dirt, but soil. That's right, John, I remember. The garden is all done, said Mouse. There is no more work to do. There is one more job. We must get the garden ready for next spring. We will turn the soil over and feed it. Feed the soil? What are you talking about? Soil doesn't need food. Yes, it does. And you know what it's called? It's called compost. Recycle your banana peels, your leaves, your tomatoes, your grass clippings, and your weeds. So all the vegetable scraps and fruit scraps that you have in your house, or maybe something that went bad, you didn't get a chance to eat it, stick that in a compost pile, but you need to put about maybe 50 or 60% leaves and brown material, mix it all up, and guess what? It turns into soil eventually. The worms and the bugs eat it all, and as it decays, it becomes new, rich soil. It's a miracle! Compost is a miracle. So, Mole said, then we can go up hiking a mountain trail while the weather is cool. And what are they seeing? They're seeing some butterflies. So here's the life of a butterfly. Caterpillar hatches from an egg. It becomes a pupa inside a chrysalis. And leaves as an adult. You see that? Caterpillar, chrysalis, emerges, turns into a butterfly. And we can watch the trees turn bright colors. Then we can rake a big pile of leaves in the front yard and jump in them. Have you ever done that? That's a lot of fun. Now, how, why leaves change color? Because the chemical chlorophyll makes leaves green. In the fall, the leaves stop making chlorophyll and the other colors start to emerge. And there's all types of leaves too. There's sumac and red maple, pine, aloe, dandelion, and a Venus flytrap. The apples are ready to pick now, said Mole. Yum. Look, said Mole, the birds are flying south. That means winter is not far away. So fruit from a flower. First you got sepals, then you've got, after an apple blossoms and has been pollinated, sepals turn into an apple and the dried sepals are at the bottom of the apple. And some birds fly south for the winter. I don't know if you know that. Birds that can't find enough food through the winter, they use the sun and the stars to find their way. And some birds even sleep while they're flying. What? Birds are incredible. When winter arrived, there was no more work to do in the garden, but Mouse and Mole could still have fun. Let's make a snow mouse, said Mole, and they did. And do you see the scarecrow from the fall? Let's go sledding on a hill, said Mole. Not so fast, shouted Mouse. We can make some snow angels. Have you ever done that? It's a lot of fun. And we can go skating on the pond. When it was too cold to stay outside, Mouse and Mole went indoors for some hot chocolate. How about some spaghetti and tomato sauce with our fresh canned tomatoes and peppers from the garden? Asked Mole. Yum, said Mouse. So food for the winter. You can can from a summer garden, you can can your green peppers, your fruit, 
You could dry some herbs and you could put your carrots and potatoes in a root cellar because it usually keeps it a constant temperature of about 50 degrees down there. The snow disappeared and warm breezes began to blow. Winter was almost over. One day Mouse ran over to Mole's house. Mole, look what I got in the mail. What is it, Mole asked. I don't know, what do you think he got? A new seed catalog, said Mouse. We can plan our garden for this year. And they did. Wow, what a great book. Woo! Our next book is The Garden That We Grew by Joan Holub. Illustrations by Hiro Nakata. Yay, Hiro! This is the garden that we will grow. This is the patch we will plant row by row. This is the dirt, all warm and brown. These are the seeds we push way down. This is the water we spray on the seeds. These are our hands that pull out the weeds. These are the buds that peek from their beds. Oh, look at the little buds. That's very exciting. If you've ever grown a garden, to see those first little leaves peeking out of the soil. Oh. These are the flowers that poke out their heads. That's exciting too. These are the pumpkins that grow on the vine. There's some rabbits in there and a doggy chasing the rabbits. And the kids are looking at their garden so happily. These are the summer days filled with sunshine. Do you see how the pumpkin's getting bigger and bigger and now she's measuring it and it's even bigger. I grew pumpkins once in a garden and I swear to you, my pumpkin was this big, if you could believe that. It's gigantic. And it started out as a little baby. These are the worms that go here and there these are the bees that buzz in the air. This is the day we've all waited for. We pick our pumpkins. One, two, three, four. Oh, they're really making an effort there. That looks very heavy. They look so happy picking their pumpkins. Inside the pumpkins is wet orange goop, otherwise known as seeds. This is the way we scoop, scoop, scoop. This is the pie we make and we munch. These are the cookies we bake by the bunch. Look, they're shaped like little pumpkins. And who doesn't love pumpkin pie? I love pumpkin pie. Let's save the seeds to grow pumpkins next year. That's a good idea. Yay, that was a great book, woo! Stay tuned for more. Hey everybody, what's happening? Woo -hoo. Here we are again, it's craft time with Miss Adaria. And today we're gonna to do some garden crafts because we just visited that lovely, lovely Mill Creek Urban Farm where you learned all about veggies and other produce that's grown in the ground and also hydroponically. Do you remember that word, hydroponic? It means grown in water. Ooh. So we're gonna make a garden of our very own today. And I started out with a plain paper plate. Hello and uh, I painted it brown with tempera paint. I let that dry. Then I came back in with some watercolors, that blue one right there, and I painted a blue sky and a couple of background grasses and other things that you might find in your garden, in your backyard, or wherever your garden is. 
just to make it look interesting. So this is gonna be really cool. And what we're gonna to plant today are three different vegetables and they're gonna be held by some yarn. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use my puncher and I'm gonna punch 10 holes down this direction and 10 holes down this direction and I'm gonna leave a space where there are no holes between this point and this point. So let's start doing that. And remember, leave a little space on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna weave the yarn back and forth. Three, four. Oh, we might do more than 10. That's okay. All right, we're gonna do 12. 12! That's so exciting! Can you count with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wow, look at that. Can you see the blue paper through the holes? We can put our wonderful hole puncher down and now I'm gonna get some yarn going. Now, I don't exactly know how much yarn we're gonna use. All I know is we're gonna use a lot. So instead of cutting it in strips like we did for the jellyfish, I'm going to just keep it on the spool and we'll uh, weave it back and forth across these holes. You'll see in, in one second. Let me just get enough yarn off the spool. The word of the day is spool. <laughs> Before I start weaving, so that we have enough. Okay, so let's see if I got this going here. Oh, this crazy yarn. And I chose brown because the brown is of course the soil. This represents underground where the root vegetables are gonna be growing down into. And then this is gonna represent more soil and it's gonna hold them, excuse me, Birdie. I'm all tangled, help me. This is going to represent more soil and we're just gonna come back and forth and back and forth. Okay, so I'm just pulling it as much as I can through these first two holes so that you have enough yarn to weave back and forth all the way down, so. Pretty good. We're just trying to represent something that's going to hold the vegetables in when you stick them in here. And you know, you can pull it tighter, but it's kind of pulling the plate towards each other, toward the ends of the plates towards each other. So I'm trying to flatten it out as I go along. It's just kind of like a little pocket and we'll be weaving the vegetables in and out like this to show how they grow when they're under the ground. So what you can do is you could take these two, right? And I'm gonna cut them. And you could tie them up into a cute little bow. Pulling a little bit tighter just to make sure. 
Here's your cute little bow. Do you know how to do a bow yet? I hope so. Because this is how you tie your shoes, right? That's right. I, I don't have shoes. Okay, so back to the back of the back. Now what I'm going to do is I cut out, I'm going to cut out a turnip, a radish, and a carrot. And we're going to plant them into our little paper garden here. What do you think about that? All right, let's cut out the radish first. A cute little red radish. And you see what I did right here? Why? What's that all about? That's its root. That's how it goes down into the dirt and grows and gets all of its nutrients and water through the roots so that it can grow up to be a cute little radish. A cute little red radish. So I just got little wigglies on the bottom of the cut to represent a root. When you cut it, it should look like that. And here is a carrot. I would like that carrot, please. <laughs> okay, Mr. Bunny, we'll give you a little piece of carrot. We'll make you a mini carrot. How's that sound? That sounds very good. All right, carrots kind of look like triangles, don't they? But they're a little rounded at the edges. So here is our carrot. And I'm going to make a little Mr. Bunny a little carrot so he can hold. How's that, dude? Oh, thank you. That looks delicious. And now we're going to cut out our radish. And the same thing with the, I mean, the turnip. The same thing with the radish is the turnip has a nice root that grows down from the bottom of it. And sometimes you can see the top of the radish and the carrot and other root vegetables, like this little turnip, peeking through the ground. And it usually has leaves on the top, right? That's how they get their sun nutrients and the root on the bottom gets the other nutrients they need out of the soil. So they can grow up and be a good food for you to eat. I don't know, but I love turnips. Not a lot of people love turnips. I love turnips. They're very good if you roast them like potatoes. And what I've done is I've drawn a couple of tops for the different vegetables here. So I'm gonna cut those out and I'm gonna start with the turnip top. And all these greens, the top of the radish, the top of the carrot, the top of the turnip, you can eat those too. Yeah, you can put them in a pan with a little bit of butter or olive oil and have greens or you could eat them raw. They're very good for you. Just make sure you wash them because it might have a little extra soil or sand in it, and that's not a good thing to eat. If you were an earthworm, you'd like the, to eat the soil, but since we're not worms, we'll stick to eating the vegetables. How's that sound? Okay. This is gonna be a little hard one, so you might wanna get your adult to come help you with the cutting. Yes, we still have our leaf. Yes, our leaf is still there. Hooray! Okay, I think I'm going to go in from the other side to finish that one. So we'll start down here. Go around the leaf. Oh. I'll just snip that off. How's that? That's good. Then we can come down here to make our little V. Look, you have a magical turnip top. It's magical. Ooh. 
So what I'm going to do is, um, after I cut out the other two tops for the carrot and the radish, I'm going to glue them on the back so that they're coming out this way. So we have our three tops, and we're just going to get those little scrappy dudes out of the way. Scrappy dudes! And now we're going to glue with our glue stick, which is right here. We're going to put a little bit of glue on the pencil side. Nope. We're going to put a little bit of glue on the non-pencil side. And put a little bit of glue on the pencil side of the turnip. And just push that down so that it looks like that. Da, da, da. Oops. And we're going to do the same thing. So I have a little glue stick on my finger. It was sticking to it. We're going to do the same thing with the carrot, pencil side, non-pencil side. So here we go. Pardon me, turnip. I cut it so well I can't tell which side is the pencil side. So that's good, then it doesn't really matter. And carrots have, what do they have? They have these lines in them, like that, right? That you see? So you could, you know, draw your pencil up, your pencil. You could draw your carrot up a little bit till it literally looks like a good carrot. Turnips sometimes have a lighter color up here. But we'll just pretend that's a little lighter than that purple. So there's your carrot, there's your turnip, and here comes your radish. Look how cute that radish is. The radish is, what is the turnip saying, radish? <laughs> it looks like a speech bubble. It's saying, eat me, I'm delicious and nutritious. Okay, so there's your pencil side, and that's your pencil side. So we're going to do it on the non-pencil side. A little bit and on the pencil side and we're gonna do this like that and then when you turn it over it's a magical radish you see how I did different leaf tops to represent the different vegetables okay so we're taking our carrot and you're gonna start in here, and you just weave it in a little bit. Weave it, weave it, weave it. So that it's like that. Isn't that cool? And then you take your radish and do the same thing, but you don't want to put it down too far because it's just a little baby vegetable. And then we take our turnip because it's so cool. And we'll put it over here and just weave it in, weave it in. And there it is. What do you think about that? You made a vegetable garden. Woo! That carrot looks really good. I think I'll go. Hey, don't eat my carrot. Hey, what are you doing? There you go. I hope you had fun. Awesome sauce. Eat your vegetables and grow your vegetables. And there you go.